Hey everyone, this will be a new series where we will go through each part of the Django framework, starting with some beginner videos and then into some more advanced concepts. These videos will not be focused on building any specific project, but instead will focus on covering a topic in Django. These videos will not replace the project videos that I've been posting for a while now. They'll just be posted additionally alongside the other videos to hopefully help those who get lost trying to follow along with those projects and to fill in any sort of gaps that may have with understanding of how these concepts work. And so in this first video, we'll cover the basics of Django models. So let's get started. So I already have a project here opened and created. This will all be in GitHub if you want to start with this. Um, I already have some things kind of set up here in advance so we can focus just on the models itself. So you'll see here we have a music project and an app called Catalog. Inside this Catalog app, I'm going to go to our models.py to start talking about models. So first things first, what is a model? A Django model is a way to create an object in the database. Usually a model class will, mo will map to a table in the database. And so every class will be a table and then every field within that class will be a column on that table in the database. This will allow us to quickly and easily build the database for our app without having to write any SQL, which makes this whole process much, much easier than it would be otherwise. So let's go ahead and get started by creating our first model. So every model will be a class. So first thing we do is create a class. And this one will create a class called artist. This will hold like music artists in this example. And then once we have a class, we need to go ahead and inherit from the, D, the Django.db.models.model class. And so since we already inherited models here from Django.db, instead of here, we can just type models.model to inherit from that class. And in case you're not familiar with Python inheritance or object-oriented programming, when we inherit from this class, we gain all the functionality inside of this class here. And so this class contains all the functionality for actually creating something in the database and, and handling all that for us. So all we need to do is define what we want in the database, which makes this a whole lot easier. Now that we have a model class created, we need to go ahead and add some fields to this. And there are a lot of different fields that we can choose from. I'm just going to go through some of the main ones. Um, I'll put a link in the description so you can go see all of them if you want to go look through them all. Um, there's just about fields for about, about anything you could possibly want. But in this example, I'm going to go ahead and just create a couple of different fields. So I'm going to start with a name field. And this will be a models.char field. And a char field is just a text input in the form. It's just a string of text is all it is. And it's, it takes one required argument. So we can pass in various different options for our different model fields, and they all get passed within the parentheses as an argument. And the one that's required for a char field is max underscore length. And this can be set to any number you want. It doesn't really matter. In this case, I'll put it to 100. Just make sure it's long enough what you want to hold in it. And in case you're familiar with SQL, what this is doing, this char field model field type, is creating a var char in the database and setting the length of it to whatever we pass in here. So this will create a var char with a length of 100 in this example. Next, I'm going to go ahead and create an email field. And luckily, Django has a model field for that. So we'll create email equals models dot email field. And what's nice about an email field is that it, it's pretty much the same as a char field as it creates like a text input, but it handles its own validation already for us. So if we were to type in something that's not an email into a Django form, that was where this field was set as an email field, it would know this is wrong and throw an error for us. So we'll need to handle any validation on our own. This email field does it for us. The next field to add will be something similar to both these fields. It will be a text field. So I'm gonna call this one bio, as we're pretending we're holding a artist bio here. We models.text field. And this is once again a string, it holds a string, but in this case it holds a much larger string. Um, you'll get the text box if you create a form using this default widget. And we'll get in the forms and widgets later, but just for now, just know this is a large text box you can put a lot more data into and does not require the max length value like the char field does. The next field we're going to add is, is an integer field. And for this example, I'll just make a song total or something. You can set it to whatever you want. It'll be a models.integer field. And this field will hold any number, just a, any whole number that you want. 
there's also other fields like a big integer field. So you can do a big integer field or a small integer field. And that just changes the size of what can it, it can hold. A big integer field holds a really, really big number. A small integer field holds, I believe, uh, negative 32,768 to 32,767. So it's, it's a lot smaller. Uh, in most cases, this integer field itself will be enough. Uh, unless you need some more specific, then you can use one of those other big or small integer fields as well. The next field we're going to hold is a Boolean field. So this will, we'll call this one favorite, as if we're marking favorites. Um, and this will be a models dot boolean field, and a boolean field is just will just hold a true or false true or false value, and it will be kind of displayed on a form as a checkbox. So it works very well for anything you need to put like a checkbox, mark, turn something on or off. You can use a boolean field for that. And if you were to want to hold a null value as well as a true false, you can do a null boolean field, which is just literally just type in null boolean field, and that will hold that for you as well. But in this case, we're just going to put a Boolean field. Next field we're going to talk about are some different date fields. So we'll make a last modified field, and we'll be a models dot, and this will be a date time field. And we could make this just a date field by just putting just date field or just time field. It's kind of up to you, but in this case, I'm going to hold a date time for this one. And we'll create one more field like this. We'll call it created. And this will be a models dot date time field as well. So you can hold any sort of date object with a date field, a date time field, or a time field, depending on what you need. And the last two fields we're gonna add are dealing with files. So if say we want to hold a profile picture, we need to hold an image somehow. And luckily Django has a way to hold this. We can do a models dot image field. Now, one important thing to know about an image field is you need to have pillow installed for this to work. So if we were to jump into a terminal, I already have my folder here open with our, my environment activated. Uh, in this case, we can just do something like pip install pillow to install pillow. I already have it installed here, but if you didn't, it would go ahead and install it. If you don't install that when using this field, you'll get an error. So make sure that's installed for this field. And if you want to store something else, like just like a general file that's not an image, we can use something called a file field for that. So I'll just create a download field here. Be kind of whatever you want. Be a models dot file field to uh, store things there. There's a lot of other fields we could use. There's a float field. So if you want to store some sort of float value, um, we can just do a models dot float field. If you want to store a slug. Call it slug equals models dot slug field. And a slug is just any, is a newspaper term, and it's used to define a string containing only letters, numbers, underscores, or hyphens. And these are generally used in the URLs. So you look at any URL, you'll see a lot of these slugs in there. Uh, if you want to store a slug on the, in the database for some reason, you can do that there as well. And there's many, many more. That's all we're going to talk about right now in this example. Again, you can see the list in the description to kind of go through all of them. But these are the main ones we use a lot. On top of these different Django field types, there's field options. And we use one already for our char field. We put this max length value inside of this char field field here. Oh, and I also you make sure you put those parentheses at the end of all these. I'm not going to delete these two because I don't want them for now. But that's just as an example. But back to our types here, or options here. But back to our options here. You can pass various different options inside of the parentheses here. Most are not required. Only some, like in the case of this chart field, are required. So let's go ahead and go through a couple different options that are available. One of them that's available is a null value. So let's say I don't want, I want this bio to be null. I have the option to be null. I can type null equals true. And that will allow it to be null in the database. There's also another blank option, which allows the form to be submitted with no value selected or inputted. So let's say I want this to be able to save null, but also I want them, the user to be able to submit a form with this as empty. I can put a comma and put blank equals true to do that as well. And that will allow this just to be empty if I want this one not be required to the user. There's also a choices option, and this will 
instead of giving them a blank text field to fill out, you'll give them a select widget with choices to, to select from, like from normal drop down within a select widget. So to explain this one, I'm gonna go ahead and add one more field to our model. And I'm just gonna call it choices just for this example. I'll put it right here. So we'll put choices equals models dot. In this case, I'll make it a text field. But instead of having that text box show up, I want it to be a select widget. And so I can do that by passing in choices equals. This will equal a list. And inside there, we'll put parentheses. We'll give it two values. So in this case, I'll just do one comma choice one. And this choice one will be what shows up inside of the, in the select widget itself. And so I can go ahead and get as many values like this as I want. So I'll do a two. My second choice will be just choice two. And this value will show up as well inside the select widget. And so now if I were to render this in a form, I would have two options. One that says choice one and one that says choice two. And that's just another way to be able to limit what the user can enter, I guess. Next, we can give these fields default values. So let's say on this favorite widget, we wanted or this favorite field, we want to go ahead and make this default to false. And it already does this automatically, but you can also add it here. So we'll do default equals false. And now this will automatically be selected, unselected to start, unless they enter something. And you could do the opposite, make it true if you wanted to or whatever, but you can do that for any of these values. You can give them a default value here. Another thing we can add is help text. So let's go to our bio here and let's add some help text. And this is just called help underscore text. And we can set this to whatever we want. We'll put the artist, or we'll say, give some info about the artist. And this will show some help text in the admin interface or in the model form if we were to use those in our application. It's also good for documentation if you need that for more advanced models. And that can also be pretty useful there as well. Okay, so next option we're gonna go over is the primary key option. So by default, Django's gonna create another field here for us. It's gonna be an ID equals models dot auto field, and it will pass in primary key equals true. If we want to set our own primary key for whatever reason, we can put um, I guess artist ID, and we can set this auto field, which is like an auto incrementing field. It will just count up one more time each time. So it creates a unique key for this field here. And this primary key means this is we're gonna be the primary key of our model. You'll need primary keys to be able to kind of ID different different rows in the table in the table later on when we get into more advanced query sets that we'll do in a future video. So this is how we will index a row and define the specific row we want to find. But by default this is added added automatically so you don't need this unless for some reason you wanted to add that. The next thing we're going to add is a unique option. So let's say on our email, we don't want multiple emails to be able to sign up. We want them to only have one email or one, want each email to be unique. Well, we have a unique field to do that for us. So we put unique equals true, and that will make this field uh, unique. And so there will be no duplicates in our database. The last two fields we're going to talk about today are auto now add and auto now. And these are great for these date time fields. So on a, on a last modified field like this, what we'd want to do is have this be updated every time the model is updated. And luckily Django has a built-in option for this. We can do auto now equals true. And what this will allow us to do is it will, it will automatically set this field to the current time when it's updated every time it's updated. But for something like I created on, we don't want that to happen. We want it to be set once and then never changed again. Just set once when it's first created and never changed after that. And so we can do this with another option, which would be auto now add equals true. And this will, will set the time to now whenever it is added to the database, but never changed after that. And so that makes these date time fields really easy to set up without having to handle any logic when it comes to actually setting the times for us. Now there's one more thing to go over before we do anything else. These image fields, by default, there is nothing that they will put one image inside of the root of our project, which would get messy after a while. So in this example, I'm going to go ahead and create another folder inside of our of the root of our project. So in our music folder here, I'm going to create a new folder. Now let's call it uploads. 
and I can go ahead and put an upload to value of uploads. And this will this will upload its file to this uploads folder instead of just putting it in the root and making this whole thing really messy. And also it would probably be good practice to put a default here for the profile picture. Once again, like we did up here, you could put a default and put a default image path right there as well to make that go to some default image. And so these can be mixed and matched however you want to, to get the, the uh, functionality you want to have. Um, but this is a pretty good example of a completed model. Once you're done and happy with it, you need to go ahead and migrate the changes to the database. And so to do this in Django, it requires running two different commands in the terminal. So I'm gonna go ahead and open a terminal here where we went ahead and installed Pillow earlier. And right now I can do an LS and I'm right here in the root of our file. So I'm gonna CD into music and I'm gonna CD into catalog, or no, I'll stay right here. And so right here, I have my manage.py file. This is where we need to be to be able to run our migrations. So to do this, I'm going to go ahead and do a python3 manage.py make migrations. And right now it said no change detected. That's because I didn't save this file. Let's go ahead and save this file and then run that again. So python3 manage.py make migrations. And you'll see we created this migrations file here. 0001 initial.py. We created a model artist. We can go look at that inside our migrations folder. And right here we have our data where we created this model. We're going to go into more detail about this later. So right now, I wouldn't worry about too much about this. But just know that once you, this first command here creates that models, that migrations file. But if you actually want to make the changes to the database, you need to run one more command, which is python3 manage.py migrate. Now we'll go migrate those changes to the database itself. And you'll see here, it applied all the migrations. And after that, we should be good to go and should be able to use our app now, or use this model now in our app. So the next step now is let's go ahead and jump into our admin panel and check this model out. I already went ahead and registered this on our admin site. We'll get into more detail about that later, but that will go ahead and let us view it in our admin panel so we can actually look at this and try it, try it out. So the first thing we're doing, we're gonna create a super user real quick so we can just view this in our admin panel. So I'll do a Python three manage.py create super user. And we can go ahead and fill in what we want. I'll call this one admin. Get a password. That's fine. And now once we have that created, we can go and run our server. So we'll do a Python 3 manage.py run server. Let's go ahead now and jump into our application now. And you'll see now we have this artist in our catalog app. We click on this. We can go ahead and add a new artist. And you'll see here, we don't have our date time fields because those are be set automatically. They don't show up with our selection or a bit available fields here anymore because they're being set automatically. Let's go ahead and create a test artist real quick. So let's call this one just test artist, I guess. Email will be test at example.com, a bio. We could leave this one blank because we put null and blank equals true. I'm gonna go ahead and just put a, a test artist in this field instead. And we'll give a song total, we can kind of be whatever you want. We'll put six in our choices. And like I said earlier, with our model, we look at this one again. And set of our choices fields here, we have a choice one and choice two. That's what's showing up on our models, or our choice list here in our select widget. So I'll select choice one. Uh, let's go ahead and mark this as a favorite. Let's go ahead and add a profile picture and a download. I just kind of selected two random thing, pictures there. You can be whatever you want. We'll go ahead and save. And now we add it successfully. We jump back inside of our app here. You'll see that we put our uploads inside of our uploads folder because we defined it to the upload to uploads. And so they all showed up within this folder right here. And now we have a row in the database with a primary key of one, which you can see is right here with all this data that we defined inside of our models. And we can go in and we can go check the, the date and time if we wanted to on them, but those are set automatically. So you don't really need to do that. We'll go into more detail later about the Django shell, how we can go in and check through the, the command line about how to check the different models we created. But in this video, since we're focusing just on the models, that's what we're gonna stop for for now. Uh, we're gonna come back and go through some more advanced topics. We can talk about relationship fields, more advanced ways to customize our models and, and so on. But for this first video, we'll stop here. All this code will be in the description below as well as some links to the documentation if you wanna read more into this. Uh, hopefully this was a good overview of Django models to help you understand the basics of how they work. Uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.